the messages that I want to focus on is Proverbs 26, 13. And it says, The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. Upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. The title of the message today is Slothful. Um, we could also just interchange it and call it sluggard or lazy. But, you know, as I was preaching last week uh, about, you know, who will be the greatest among you and speaking of how you, we, we must be servants in order to grow in Christ's ministry, I kept thinking to myself, and it actually the title of this message is the first time it's ever happened to me came in the middle of my last message. But the, the, what I was thinking is, you know, how many people are just so lazy and so unwilling to do the work of the Lord, but not just the work of the Lord, how many people are just lazy to do work, period? Yeah. And, you know, our country is in a point where, I mean, nobody wants a job, and if they do, you know, they want all the perks and all the, the French benefits and the pay, but they haven't done anything yet. You know, most people come and negotiate a price before they've ever proven that they can do the job, period. And it's funny, I don't know how we got into that in society where we'll offer someone a salary without ever knowing what they're able, capable of doing. You know, we should. it should be the opposite. It should be like, look, I'm gonna give you an opportunity, show me what you can do, and then I'll attach a work to it. Yep. But the reality is most people are like, oh, well, I want, you know, $15 an hour. Well, what can you do? <laughs> well, nothing yet. You've got to train me. Well, then let me pay you $5 an hour, and in a month, when I've showed you, maybe we'll see if you're worth 15 But it's the, it's the exact opposite. But let me, uh, let, let's just get, so today we're going to cover a lot of scripture. And, uh, you know, I, I don't normally do this. Most of the time, you guys know, you know, I'll either preach a couple of points, or I'll, I'll, or I'll do a comparison of a positive with a negative. But right, this, this just came to me, and I mean, there's not that many verses. Well, there is, but it's not like it's going to take all day. But we can cover most of the verses that have to do with sluggard and slothful and then tie it to what we're dealing with today in society. So if you look, and the reason I do this is because, uh, you know, last week we spoke about, which by the way, I'm doing this because I want to update you guys. Pastor Robertson is now out of detainment. You know, he did a video where he was detained for 12 week, 12 days, 12 weeks, 12 days in Australia on hate speech, and he's officially been deported. Now the Lord has a work, you know, he doesn't need him in Australia, he needs him where he needs him. But it's just sad that he's been deported to New Zealand, he's separated from his family because his youngest daughter was born in Australia, so she has to get her New Zealand citizenship, all that stuff, but you know, the, the funny thing is, it's the guys who do the work, you know, he's willing to put the time and stand up for what, because it's hard work to stand up on God's work, right? It's really easy, it's simple, not to say the truth on anything, you never get in trouble. But that's hard work. And you know, the slothful, they, they create scenarios in their head that don't exist so that they don't have to stand up for anything. And we'll, we'll get to that. But a couple of things you're going to see here, if you guys will turn, we're going to be mostly in Proverbs. If you'll turn to Proverbs 12, 24, so it'll be real easy. We're just going to be going back and forth. There's not that many, uh, well, there's quite a bit, but it's mostly in Proverbs. Uh, if you go to Proverbs 12, 24, the Bible says, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. And so the first thing that we see here is that, you know, if you're if you're diligent at work, what it means is you're gonna bear rule, meaning either you're gonna be in a position of leadership, or even if you're not in a position of leadership, let's say you just have a job where you're self-employed, at least you can control your, your, your own destiny, you can control the way you make your income. Most people don't, don't uh, go self-employed because, you know, they can't clock they can't have the discipline to get up early and work late. You know, what's interesting is I used to be uh, in the financial services, and uh, one of the things we did was we would recruit agents. And, you know, I know Pastor has done some work in the past in, uh, in insurance, and one of the common ways to do this is you have a brokership and you have agents, and a lot of them would be there part-time. And then uh, they had a job, like an eight to five, that they would clock in, and they were making money part-time. And then what had happened is they ended up making enough money where they could quit their jobs. And, and then what's interesting is well, the biggest challenge I had, or we had as leaders, 
was that they would go to their jobs from eight to five. So they get up at six o'clock in the morning, get dressed, get in traffic, fight traffic, go at eight, come home at five, eat dinner, go to bed, do it all over again for years. Then they quit, become self-employed, and they're like getting up at nine or 10, and they're starting their day at 11, and they're taking lunch. And we're like, look, you now own a business. Actually, you would go clock in at work before, and now you're being lazy about the whole thing, and you expect to make the same kind of money. When the mentality changes, and so the first thing is, you, if you're gonna bear rule, you have to be diligent. But then the, it says, but the slothful shall be under tribute. And the way that I liken this is, you know, tribute is another word for taxes. But it's not just the taxes that, that people are taxing us now because we have an entitlement society. But also, you know, people are just willing to do monotonous jobs, jobs that don't have any responsibility, and pay taxes up the yin yang as long as nobody tells them to do any more beyond that. You know, we have a just enough mentality. I mean, I've heard things like this is a run the clock out situation. You know, we're not gonna do things faster or better than anybody else. We're just gonna clock in, we're gonna clock out. And I mean, it's more people like that than the other people who say, oh, you know what, it doesn't matter what I get paid, I'm gonna show up early, I'm gonna leave late, I'm gonna get the job done, and when I get home, I'm still gonna take care of my family and do the things that I need to do. That mentality has to be trained. You know, the Bible actually speaks on work a lot. And if you look, you know, when God wants to make a point, Jesus spoke more on hell than he did on heaven, right? He spoke, he speaks a lot about slothfulness. Now he does about diligence. I'm not gonna say that I know whether one's more than the other, but he speaks a lot about being lazy and a good for nothing. Nobody just taking up space and what it causes in society. Look, the next thing you wanna look at is go to just verse 27 of uh, Proverbs 12. And uh, verse 27 talks about, you know, you're too lazy to follow through. You know, you, you have the tendency to start something, but you never finish it. We have a society of starters, but not finishers. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 27, the slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. And in Proverbs 6, 6, you don't have to turn there for the sake of time. It says, go to the ant, thou slugger, consider her ways and be wise. In other words, these two kind of stand out because number one, it, it's that mentality I was telling you about. They'll start something, they went hunting, they caught something, oh man, now I gotta carry that deer, and I gotta gut it, and field dress it, and then I gotta cut it up in fourths, and you know, shank it, and do all that, get, get all the, the good stuff, the roast, and the rump, right, and the, and the breast, and whatever else, and you can tell I'm not a deer hunter, because I'm probably getting all the terms wrong, but what I'm saying is that's, that's a lot of work. You know, I've been deer hunting a couple of times, I've never had the privilege of of killing my own deer, but I've been with others and we've, we've had to field dress. That's a lot of work, you know, hanging it, and cutting it, and putting it under pieces, and making sure you freeze it. That's work, and what he's saying there is, this guy goes out there and he hunts, and he's like, that's it, I'm done. That's slothful, you know, just doing half the job is slothful. And a lot of people try to get away with that, right? And then it's in Proverbs 6, it's go to the ant thou slugger, consider her ways and be wise. It reminds me, I don't know how, uh, if you guys ever saw this, but I remember, it's not a Disney cartoon, I don't think. But it was a cartoon and it was about the ants, and it was about a, a cricket. And the cricket was playing a fiddle and joking around and the ants were like, look, you need to get, get your act together, because winter's coming. And then winter comes, obviously it's a cartoon, and, and the, the poor cricket's like dying of hunger and it's cold, and the ants are having a party underneath the ground because they collect all the food. And they finally bring him in and he plays the fiddle for them and they feed him. But you know, that always stood, that always stuck in my mind, and so every time I read this verse, it reminds me of that. It's like, that's what most society does, you know, they just play around. You know, all the jobs are jobs that, that, it, that have to do with entertainment. You know, the cool thing now is to get a corporate job like at a Google company, you know, where you're sitting down and for, for your 15 minute break you play ping pong. And if you're not playing ping pong, you play video games. That, that's kind of like what I like in that, that cartoon too. And the, the, the ant is the guy that, that's just the old school, nothing's changed, where you go to work, you get up, you do the job, when you take a break, you're actually taking a break because you're tired from real work. Yep. And then you continue to do the work. And what does the Bible says? But the substance of a diligent man is precious. So we see that, number one, the sloth was always dependent on someone else, and then they're too lazy to follow through on anything. There's no follow through or commitment, and we, we have a society of juvenile adults 
We have a society of grown men and women who can't commit to anything. That's why divorce is at an all-time high. That's why people jump from job to job and are starting careers later in life and they're calling them second and third careers. It's the problem is that you know they go hunting, but they don't want to cook. They just go hunting and want somebody else to do the work. You know, yesterday I was at a, my wife uh, had a migraine and I got back on Friday from uh, traveling on business and so, you know, I, uh, I went to the grocery store to get groceries while Mary Sarah, because you know, a wife that has kids with a migraine doesn't stop being a mom. You know, the kids still need mom. See, that's, you can't be a slothful mom if you have kids. It's just, I mean, unless you're just completely neglecting your, your children. No matter how bad your head hurts, no matter how much light affects your eyes, you know, Luciana still wants mama. You know, uh, Enrique still wants mama. They want the body, you know, they're hungry. They want to play, they want the attention. So anyways, I went to the store. And one of the things that, you know, I noticed that I was preparing for the sermon is how many service, uh, how many of these people that say like shift or delivery services are wearing the shirts. They're doing grocery shopping for other people. You know, and I'm not against, it, you know, if there's a specific situation, I'm not, you know, let's say somebody's older and can't get around. Man, if you, if you are young, you have strength and energy, go get the groceries. Yep, amen. You're like, well, I'm, I need to save time. Really, you're gonna lose that much time. People have been doing it forever, yep. for thousands of years. Before grocery stores, they would go dig it up outside. The, you, can't, you can't go get your own food. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're willing to pay for a service industry. Think about our country, just how many services there are. You know, Uber, we can't drive ourselves anywhere. We can't make our own food. They'll deliver cooked food to your house. I mean, they, they do everything for you because we're just so lazy yeah. that we, won't, we don't want to get anything done. Go to Proverbs 15, uh, and uh, we're going to be in verse 9, 19, sorry. You know, the next point is that life is tough all, all the time for them and with those that they interact. A slothful person has a tough time in life. There's, they always have some challenge, they always need, they always have some problem, some excuse, you know, excuses are like belly buttons, everybody's got one, right? And even with the ones that they interact with them, they, they create uh, strife and problems for the people they interact with. Look, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 15, 19, says the way of the slothful man is a hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. And then uh, Proverbs 10, 26, you don't have to turn there. Uh, it says, as vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the slugger to them that send him. In other words, the slugger or the slothful, man, they are a burden on the people that work with them. You know, have you ever had smoke in your eyes? That's like the worst feeling. You know, I do a lot of, I try to do cookouts for, uh, at the house sometimes, and you, you know, we have a, a gas grill, which for a Hispanic, that's like a, that's committing a sin, right? It should be cold. Don't, don't, you know, it's gonna be out there, but don't tell anybody that you use a gas grill. So, you know, you close that thing, and it starts to smoke up and you open it and the eye the smoke gets in your eyes and I mean you have to it hurts and you're rubbing for like a minute just to get that pain out and it's really irritating you can't see you can't do anything for that 30 seconds to the minute that's what the Bible like is a slothful man a lazy man it says it's like smoke in your eyes it's like vinegar in your teeth you know you ever have that you ever get something with vinegar and get that metallic feeling you know you have that it feels real weird like you gotta like bite it out of your out of your teeth. So is the slugger to them to send them. See that the first part is the way of the slothful man is a hedge of thorns. You know, I can think of examples of people in my life that simple things become a burden on everybody just because they're lazy. You know, I I have a family member whose uh, whose family, their the wife, the dad of that of the wife is dying of cancer. Whatever, you know, it is what it is. We're praying for them, life goes on. But they live in another country. But this family hasn't saved money. You know, they, they like to spend and not work hard and do these things. And all of a sudden it's become a burden on the family members that I know directly because they're coming to them for money or asking for raises through the business. And and when when the response is, well, you know, that we're not in that position right now, they, they, they make it seem like it's the other person, the other party's fault. Like, why can't you do this for me? You're always against me. You're always, you know, they want people to solve their problems. It's a hedge of thorn, their vinegar to the teeth, their smoke to the eyes. It's you, and, and that's society, right? I mean, I remember when, uh, and I'm not getting into politics, but if you guys remember when Barack Obama was gonna be uh, elected as president, 
one of the big things was there was a group in the community that was excited. They said, I'm voting for him because he's going to pay my mortgage. You know, people were expecting the government to take care of them. Whether that was true or not, it's independent. The mentality, the reality is that we have a group of society members that really believe that it's our, it's, it's government's responsibility or those that work to provide for them. You know, I mean, we have homeless shelters here in, in, in Houston and people donate and there's people that show up. I mean, I remember when I served in politics, they would come and they expected a handout and if you didn't give it to them properly or you made them go through the process, you know, filling out forms or showing proof, they get mad at you. Mm -hmm. They get, they get in your face and almost say like, you know, why are you treating me like this? They become a burden on society, right? The next point is they waste or destroy their life, right? Go to Proverbs 18. Well, go to 13 first. Proverbs 13, verse number 4. It says, The soul of the slugger desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. And then... Go to Proverbs 18, verse 9, and it tells us, He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. In other words, the slothful or the lazy bum, they waste their life. They'll find a way to, to create an excuse to not do anything. Now you say, why am I picking on lazy people? You know, haven't you ever procrastinated every year? I've been lazy. I've been and I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually, one of the things I have to fight is procrastination. But the Bible says I can't, that's not right. But the challenge here is, I'm going to get to the point, but I'm getting a little bit out of myself because I want to make a, a good point, is that people that are slothful, if you start wasting and creating idleness, and you start becoming a burden, then you start going into wickedness. Because you, the like Bible said right there, right? The desire of the slugger. What does the Bible say? Well, we lust, and we have imaginations, and we think things. What's well, not that difficult when you're not doing anything to start thinking of things that you shouldn't be doing. Yep. You know, an idle mind is the devil's uh, playground, is what people have said. And I, I might have butchered that saying, but the, the reality is you waste your life. And the other challenge is as you waste your, your life, you start dragging others with you. Haven't you ever noticed that people that don't have anything to do are always calling you because they want you to join them in doing nothing with them. You know, you ever have that one friend? I have a couple people in my life, they'll call me, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I, you know, I'm busy, I've got my kids, I'm preparing service. You think we could come by and hang out? I don't know, I'm busy. Yeah, and so I have to just get real blunt and honest, like, look, you can come by, but I'm probably gonna ignore you because I got things I've gotta do. You know, I travel, I come home, I haven't seen the family, we've got things to do, there's work, I got church, and for me, I'm not making it a burden on them, I'm just letting them realize, look, I don't have that much free time for you because there's things that are more important than we need to do. They're great wasters of life, and their desire becomes to waste life. They just, constantly thinking of things that, you know, they're planning the next vacation. I remember I, I, uh, I grew up with this guy by the name of Art, he's dead now. And, you know, I know he's in hell because he was a sodomite, but that's not the point that I'm making here, but just so you know that he, he didn't care for the Lord. But one of the things was he just never took off in his life. He lived with his mom till he was 50. He died of uh, dialysis or something. He was sick. But the guy was all, he traveled the world. Never had money, but somehow traveled the world. Never, never had a career, but somehow always had money. What it was was he was a lazy guy. He was thoughtful, and he mooched off of people, and he was a burden on people, and even his friends just kind of kept the distance at from him because he was always asking for a handout, and he was kind of opportunistic. You know, it just makes me think of that. And what, what became of his life, it was a waste to the fact that he got sick, and immediately, shortly after that, he died. You know, I've met people who are sick, who have cancer or who have a chronic disease and when they're working they don't have time to be sick they just kind of plow through it and they're like oh yeah they gave me a couple years to live and i it's been two decades since the last time somebody told me i had to die but they're busy right they're doing the work you know and that, it's not always the work of the lord but it's just the way that you attack life but the slothful they waste it they just they just don't have time for anything but they, but they have time for everything. It, it doesn't make any sense. Because you ever call somebody who's lazy also? Hey, can you help me out with this? Oh, well, I've, you know, I've got things to do. What do, you got to go, what, what do you got going on? Well, and they never give you a straight answer, right? And then you find out, because now with social media, they're also real, <laughs> real dumb about it. You see them like out at the park or something. They could have helped you, but they didn't have time to do that because they needed to go to the park and gallon around or something. 
The next point is, you know, let's go to Proverbs 19, verse 24, and we're going to then go to 26. You know, they're too lazy to care for oneself, therefore they can't care for others, right? And in Proverbs 19, verse 24, it says, A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. And then let's go to verse 26 real quick. I mean, chapter 26, sorry, uh, verse 15 of Proverbs. Chapter 26 and verse 15 of Proverbs says, The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. So see, a, you see both of them basically are the same verse. And I mean, this is not an exaggeration. You know, there's... I can't... Like, you, when the, you know, you've heard that saying, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. Amen. This is true, right? There's people that are lazy. So lazy that they just won't. Well, my hand's here, but I just... Yep, amen. I just... And I've, I've met people that are late. I've met people who will sit in the couch because in order to avoid using their hands, they will put the bowl right here of like popcorn or whatever. You ever met those people? And they'll eat. And then once they start getting to where they have to reach, it becomes this lazy thing. I mean, it does get like that where they just like, you know, and it's, I mean, what, what in the world? Get to work. But that's the society we live in. You know, and that's what causes it. I'm going through these points real quick because I want to close out with a couple of things that it causes for society. But there's a lot that the Bible says about the slothful. You know, when if God says that there's people that are so lazy that they can't take their hand from their bosom to their mouth, there's people that are that lazy. Yep. And we have to be careful for them. It says, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. In other words, they'll take one bite of something and then that's it. That's it. I mean, how do you even get to that point in your life? But anyway, that you know, we have a society that's so lazy. We have shows on TV, that, and and uh, that because I looked all this stuff up, you know, like uh, that I think there's a show on hoarders. You know, people that hoard stuff. That's laziness. If you can't clean your own house and you can't put discipline in your mind to get rid of stuff you don't need, that's being slothful, right? That's being a slugger. There's, there's programs out there, or videos, or whatever, TV series, for people that are just obese. You know, the struggle that they're, that they're fighting to lose weight. You know, they, they got so fat, because they're just so lazy, they won't exercise, and they have an eating problem. And it's always like this emotional, dr dramatic thing about how, you know, they grew up this way, or they can't control it, or it's their genetics. Reality is, yes, you know, I grew up with a dad who's a doctor. There are people who have genetic disorders that can cause them to gain weight, but that's usually the exception to the rule, right? Most people, if you're overweight, or if you're out of shape, or if you're sick, or you didn't take care of yourself, it's because you're undisciplined, and you didn't put time and effort in the work to get right with, with the, yourself and with God. You know, God, the Bible speaks of being healthy. And, and what we put in our bodies and what we don't put in our bodies and different things like that, right? Uh, turn to Proverbs 21. Well, let's stay there in 26 and then we'll go to 21 because we're 26, 16. Just go down to verse 16 and it says, The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. And if you just go back to 21 and, and you go to verse 25, uh, it says, The desire of the slothful killeth him for his hands refuse to labor. And the reason that those two are together is because the slothful eventually gets to the point where they, they daydream or think of ways to be lazy and they're too smart for their own good. And what I mean by that, the reason I put that point there is we have a society that works a lot. You know, Americans are known for taking the less amount of vacation and the, but that's just a statistic. If you go into the workforce, the reality is that we've created a way for people to clock in and clock out, but not work. Amen. Yep. There's a big difference. See, being busy and doing work are two different things. You know, I can pay somebody to shuffle papers all day long. That didn't mean they accomplished anything. Right. That doesn't mean that they did any work. 
You know, and I, I've met busybodies, you know, they're like, what you do today? Oh, well, you know, I had to, I had emails, and I had to organize these files, and, you know, I'm like, you know, because I do business consulting, so sometimes I have to question people that are deficient in areas, you know, and are, we, are they going to keep them in the business, or are we going to have to find somebody to replace them? I'm like, well, what, that's fine, I, I can understand you answering an email, I can understand you have to file some stuff away, you have to answer some phone calls, what did you accomplish today? Like, what did you do that was positive for this company that you work for that's paying you a salary? Well, you know, I just, you don't understand. You don't understand the work that I have to go through. Well, help me understand. And then most of the time what ends up happening is they get mad and walk out on you. And with, with the, reason, the reason is because they have a desire to be slothful. It leads to their destruction, right? And then the other thing is they're wiser in their own conceit. You ever met that guy? that's too smart for, for his own good, and you can't tell him anything, you're like, look, I'm not telling you how to do things, but I've been around a while, and you know, if you get up early, and if you tackle your day like this, and you do certain things, you can accomplish this. Or if you would just change this technique, and you would do this, we could, we could accomplish so much more. Well, that's not true. Actually, well really, you know, blah, 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 and, you know, it becomes one of those, as a matter of fact, it reminds me, I had a conversation earlier this week with a younger guy, and we were talking, oh, I was actually, I don't know, uh, I was talking about commitment. I was in one, of, in one of the labs in this clinic, and I was talking to the younger guys, and I was like, look, the challenge with you guys is that you guys are young, and you don't, you, you have commitment issues. You know, they hadn't done something, I was telling you, yeah. And, uh, and I said, and so the, one of the guys, right away, he was wiser in his own conceit, he's like, aren't you my generation? I said, well, I, I said, how old are you, Jane? And he's like, well, I'm 22, 23. And I was like, well, I'm 38. I don't know if we're the same generation. Oh, no, I think we are. Let me Google it right away. Oh, oh, what year were you born? 1960 something? It's like, James, how old do you think that I am? 60, that's like a, like a 20 year gap between the time I was born. Oh, oh, so you're from 70s, right? No. Oh, what year are you? So then I finally told him, he's like, oh, you're right. You're right. We're not the same. You're, we're not the same generation. But then, Instead of accepting the fact, and it wasn't an argument like, like I wasn't trying to make a point, I was just telling him, hey, get commitment, get the job done. Then it became, well, the other thing you have to take into consideration are economic factors. You know, that's that's the guy that just, you're not gonna win with. You know, he loses the battle, but so he finds another excuse. They, they desire to be slothful. You know, they didn't like the fact that I, was, that I told them they need to be committed to what they're doing. In other words, start something, finish it. You know, if you start a job, don't leave until you finish it. Oh, well, it's five o'clock. Was the job done? No? Well, then stick around. Well, am I getting overtime? How about you get the job done yep. so that we can get the income so I can just pay you? Who cares about overtime? You know, two things that I hate, because I still, I still, you know, I'm bivocational, so I still do business a lot, is when I when talk to someone, first thing they ask you is, well, how much are you going to pay me? How about just do the job and we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. You know, we're good business guys. Or the second one is, Hey, can you do this for me? You know, can, well, are you gonna pay me? What do you mean, I'm not paying you now? Well, that's not in the scope of what you told me I was gonna do. How about the scope of what I told you you're gonna do is that you work for this company, and as long as we ask you to do something so we can accomplish the goal, then you get paid. I mean, it's not like, like you're getting, it's not torture. We're not taking slave labor. You know, you're not under a regime that says, you know, you have to work 20 hours, and you're gonna get some rice and bread. You're getting a paycheck, you know, we, we follow labor laws, we do things in orderly, why do you have to be concerned about it? Because they're slothful. Because really the reality is what they're saying is, I don't want you to ask me to do more than I've been asked to do. And even what you ask me to do, I'm not really sure that I want to do it. That's the reality of the thing, right? They daydream of ways to be lazy. You know, they're too smart for their own good. That's why robots and all these computer and AI programs are taking over. Because people don't want to do the work. And so what business owners are having to do is resort to technology because they'd rather deal with technology and the errors of technology than someone who's going to tell them that, you know, they have a tummy ache so they can't come into work. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and you think I'm exaggerating. I've heard excuses like, oh, you know, I stayed out too late last night. My head hurts. I can't come into work. What's going on? I mean, unless you're dying, show up. You know, you feel better. By the time you go home, you'll probably be feeling better anyways. They lie. And they eventually believe their own lies. 
See, it's a progression. If you look at what we're doing, you know, it becomes this thing where it leads to wickedness. Look, go to Proverbs 22, verse 13. It says, The slothful man saith, There is a lion without, and I shall be, and, 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 and it's not and, I shall be slain in the streets. In other words, it, and I mean, I, there's always that danger when you're preaching something like this. That someone hears and they're like, well, in those days they lived in villages. No. Look, lions and wild animals will stay away from civilization. Yep. Most of the time, animals are more scared of humans than we are of them. Yep. Amen. Right? Yep. They're even like even now, like we, if you if you study like countries where they're still living out in the jungles, like in India or in the Amazon. Most of the time when people get attacked, it was for something stupid, like they left the food out and it attracted an animal that came in. But it's not like a common thing. Lions aren't just running around the cities of Israel and Judea and you know, Samaria and Saudi Arabia. They're not just, it's not a common thing. You didn't wake up in the morning, open your window, you're like, oh, there's a lion, I can't go out. <laughs> what this guy's saying is he created a lie. And not only a lie, it's a fearful lie. Now he's saying, look, there's a lion, I'm gonna get eaten. Two things. Number one, he doesn't want to go out, but now he's going to scare others to not go out. You know? It's like right now, people are like, oh, heat advisory. Be careful when you go out in the streets. Look, it's been hot in Texas since I, I got here in 1985, and the only two two temperatures we know in Texas are hot and hotter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's not something new for us. They're like, well, be careful if you're going to be out there. And it's 100 degrees, but it feels like 120. Look, you're already putting in their mind how hot it's going to feel. There's people that have been working out in the labor all their lives. Just drink water, wear long sleeves, cover yourself up. Amen. Now, if you're an idiot and you're out there, you didn't drink any water, and you're exposed to the sun, yeah, you can have a heat stroke. That's a real thing. But people have been working in heat for a long time. It's not going to kill you to get a little sweaty. Really? I mean, that's really, or it's too cold, right? Or there's dangers. And then uh, go to Proverbs 26, 13. He said, the slothful man say, there is a lion in the way, a lion in the streets. So at least this guy, I don't know if it's better, but at least he just called out a lion. He didn't say he was going to be killed by the lion. But it's the same thing, right? And if you look at Proverbs 20, verse 4, it says, the sluggard will now plow by reason of the cold. Therefore, shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. There's another just fear mongering, right? Oh, it's too cold. You could get hypothermia. Your hands could freeze. You whatever. You know, if you've ever worked out, I'm not built for cold. Personally, you ask me, I mean, I've been to like the Northeast in October, November, never in December, and it was tough. Like, it hurts. But that didn't stop me from doing the work that I needed to do when I was over there. In other words, have you ever worked out in the cold? I used to go running in the mornings. I need to get back to running, but I used to go running in the winter, 30 degree weather, you know, and it's really, it's horrible for like the first five minutes. But then once you get going, that blood gets pumped into your body, you're taking off yep. garments. I mean, you can be in like 30 degree weather. If you're working hard, you're probably down to like a short sleeve. You get hot, yep. you know, so it's the, stop lying to people and stop lying to yourself. You know, they lie and they eventually believe their own lies. Look, go to Leviticus 26. This is the only one we're going to uh, veer from. Go to Leviticus 26. You know, in Leviticus, this is where we're getting all the, the different, the Sabbath and the rules and, and uh, different things like that, you know, and uh, for the people of Israel. And, it, you know, in Leviticus 26, he's giving them the good stuff. Like he says, if you do all this, if you keep all my stuff, I'm going to bless you. But then if you go to verse... Uh, Leviticus 26 verse 14 and this stood out just this year as I was reading it um, it says but if you will not hearken unto me and I will do and will not do all these commandments and if you shall despise my statutes or your soul abhor my judgments so that you will not do all my commandments but that you break my covenant I will also do this unto you I will even appoint over you terror consumption and the burning aid, and shall consume the eyes, and cause sorrow of the heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. Verse 17, I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They shall hate you, shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursueth. In other words, you're so lazy. And you say, how are you tying this? Because these verses he's talking about, 
you know, when you're lazy, when you're sluggard, and you just it's gotten out of hand, you start fearing things that aren't there. And God, that's a punishment. This is what he, God told him in Leviticus. He gave him all the positive. He said, look, if you do all this, here's all the positive. If you don't do all this, here's all the negative. One of the negatives is you're going to start having paranoia. Basically, nobody's pursuing you, and, you, and you're, you're running away. But what does the Bible say in Proverbs 28? 1, the wicked flee it when no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Well, look, you can't be bold as a lion if you haven't trained in the word. If you can't stand on your own two grounds. Look, a military guy, a military uh, general or someone who's out in the field can't be bold as a lion if they just read a book on military tactics. You know how you get there? You go to boot camp. And boot camp's hard work. Because you got to get up early. You got to run miles with backpacks, right? You got to go through the motions. You got to learn how to shoot. And you got to learn how to fight. You got to do it every day. And they put you to bed at a certain time. And then they wake you up again at a certain time. And you hate it. Every minute of it. And I've never been to boot camp. But that's how it is. Talk to anybody who's been in the military. That's how you stand bold as a lion. Well, how do we do that? With the Word of God. We have to get up in the morning and read our Word. We have to pray. We have to memorize. We go to bed with the Word of God. We stand out. We go soul winning. Soul winning is hard work. Eli and I went soul winning last week for an hour. Because uh, we cut it early. I had a family member over. But we went for one hour in this heat advisory. And it was hot. I'm not going to lie. But we got people saved. That's hard work. right? We'll go maybe two, three hours today. Whatever the Lord sends us. That's work. Not, you know, oh, uh, well, I don't, Eli won't say this, but hopefully nobody will say that. You know, maybe, we don't have lions here, but mountain lions or something. Oh, you know, it's too hot. Don't go after because there's mountain lions in Texas. Yeah, something like that. That's really the excuses people are giving you. Nobody goes out. Nobody wants to do anything because it's too hot. And if it's not too hot, it's too cold. If it's too cold, it's too rainy. If it's too rainy, it's too everything. It's the same thing, like, people say, well, when I get all my life in order, I'll go soul winning. So then they get their life in order. Well, guess what? Another set of problems is coming. And then when you're done with those problems, another set of problems is coming. Right? You know, you're never going to finish dealing with stuff in your life. Stop making excuses for getting the job done. Right? Because that's wicked. Last point, and then, uh, and then I'll kind of put it all together right here, is that the slothful, being lazy makes you tired and stupid. And I mean really stupid, because there's a difference in life. People have uh, made the term ignorant negative. Look, there's nothing wrong with ignorance. I've been ignorant all my life. I'm still ignorant in a ton of things. But if you know something, and you know better, and you still go back and do that thing, that's stupidity, right? And the slothful is like that. They're lazy. You say, hey, don't do this. And they're like, oh, yeah, I promise I won't do that anymore. And they just go back to doing or not doing the certain things that got them in trouble. Look at Proverbs 24, verse 30. Proverbs 24, verse 30. And it says, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man. Sorry. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. See, he's void of understanding. Like, he's stupid. Because you gave him understanding, and he just couldn't get it. There's like a big, empty vacuum. Hello? You know, you ever remember when you were little, and you'd make fun of someone because you said you could blow on their ear, and it would echo through the other ear because they didn't have it. Don't do that, but I mean, right? That's what it is. It says, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles, and covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw, and I considered, well, I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy wants as an armed man. In other words, this guy is so void of understanding in this example that his his home, his land, it's grown over. He can't he can't take care of it. Look, there's a lot of things that I don't know, but sometimes you just gotta figure it out. Right? You're not going to just let something go broken or, uh, you know, you're not going to let a faucet leak. You're going to figure it out. If you have to go work extra to pay somebody to do it because you might not be able to fix it, that's fine. Or grab a book and figure it out. Read an instruction. But this guy's just like, he's void, uh, void of understanding. And it was grown over with thorns, nettles covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken. You ever been to someone's house that's lazy? You know? 
You ever been to someone who doesn't take care of themselves? You don't even want to sit down. You know, you, you wish you would have taken something you could, because it's nasty, right? It's dirty, everything's broken, the shrubs are grown over. You know, I mean, we're a small church, and the grass still gets cut, and the church is still clean. Why? Because we're not going to deal with a, a lot of lazy people. I mean, we're not, there's no, like, there's no diamond chandeliers or anything like that. But I mean, it should look orderly, right? It should look yeah. clean and presentable. I don't, we don't need any, uh, what do they call it, bling. But we just, it, it's okay, it's presentable. These are the things that you do. How do you do this? Well, you don't hang around with slothful people. You know, people that are lazy, they're going to let this thing just go to ruins. And it's going to affect not only their lives, but the lives of others. You ever, I mean, I'm not saying that this is the example we should use, but I remember going to these uh, uh, homeowners associations when I was with the, the council member. And the very first thing they do is they're always complaining about that one house that's dirty. You know, my, my natural instinct is that we're free people, right? And so, you know, if that guy wants to be lazy, don't associate with him. But they were mad because if that house is dirty, it affects the value of all the other homes. You know, that's how that's how bad it is because if the house is torn down and the roof's unkempt, they come and do evaluations. If you're trying to sell your home, well they compare it to the other homes in the area. And if that home's messed up, it brings the value of your home down. So then people get real angry, they threaten to sue and kick people out. But that's that's what happens because these people are void of understanding, they're lazy. Go to Proverbs 6, 6 9. It says, How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou rise out of this, out of thy sleep? Get a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, as a, and thy want as an armed man. If you see, it's basically the same verses for the sloth and the sluggard. There's a reason why God's uh, repeating himself. And if we go back to the original text, Proverbs 26, 13, it says, The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way, a lion in the streets. As the door turneth upon its hinges, so does the slothful upon his bed. The, sly, the slothful hideth his hand in, the, in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it against his mouth. The, slug, the sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. In other words, there's all these consequences. You ever meet those people that hit the alarm and then they turn? That's why, I mean, that's a, such a great visual because it turns on its hinges, you know. You ever, and then, and then, and then, you know, and you sleep like that, you know. I, I, I've been young once, and I wasn't always as hard working as I am now. I'm all about. You turn off the alarm, five more minutes, and five more minutes, and five more minutes, and five more minutes, and it's three hours later, and you never got up. And I always thought, even when I did it, I always thought it was so stupid. Just sleep in. You know, this whole alarm going off and turning off, you never get, like, proper sleep, because you just keep waking yourself up every five minutes, right? Just, if you're going to do it, just do it right. But don't do it at all, is what I'm trying to make. But here's a couple of points I want to make with all these verses that we pointed out. Look, it is a sin to be slothful. It's a sin to be lazy. It's a sin not to do this. And it's not so much how it affects society. It's society, it's affecting it. But it's how it affects us personally. As Christians, it's a negative thing to be lazy. Right? God expects us to be diligent over little. In other words, for him to, in order for him to give us much more, right? God expects us to read his word day and night. God expects us to pray. God expects us to bring our bodies into subjection, right? He expects us to bring our minds to flee uh, idolatry, to, to avoid temptation. Well, how do you do that? It's work. You know, it's hard work not to sin. I'm not saying, you know, we're never going to stop sinning, but as you get older, you can sin less. I'm not saying you're sinless. I'm saying you sin, pause, less. If you discipline yourself and you work hard and you put some labor into the things that you're growing into, right? But you can't do that if you're lazy. And the challenge is that it's real easy to point out the overtly, just, you know, real out there in your face, lazy person. That's real easy for us to point a finger, but we gotta look to ourselves in just the little things that start to add up, right? It's that one time you miss the Bible reading, or you just don't show up to one of the services, or or you just don't show up to church at all for one week. You know, it's you, you don't miss church over time just because you decided one day. What happened is you didn't show up to church one way one week, and then the next week it got a little bit easier. And then the week after, I got a little bit easier. And then pretty soon, you're not even thinking about church. Until somebody says, hey, 
Have you been to church? Oh, man. <laughs> it's been a long time since I went to church. How many people do we run into when we're knocking doors and be like, well, it's been years since I went to church. Yep. And, it, and that pattern's consistent. We've had people here. There's a, a church member here that came through the soul winning ministry that, that started coming regularly. And he said he hadn't been to church in 20 years. He showed up for a couple months and then disappeared. It makes sense. If you did it for 20 years, what's your discipline like? It's 20 years of bad discipline not showing up. What makes you think you're going to stay consistent for the next 20 years? You know, it's like my brother told me one time. My brother's always had a problem with a, a weight problem. You know, right now, actually, he's doing real good. He's lost a lot of weight, and he's trying to get healthier. But I, I remember he hated people telling him, hey, just don't eat this and get on a diet. You know, everybody always has an opinion. And I remember one time he turned to me, and he's like, look, he said, I didn't get fat overnight. What makes me think that I'm going to lose weight overnight? And it's true. Yeah. It's the slothfulness and laziness. It's, you're still working. You're just working negatively. You know, you're working backwards. You're doing things the hard way. You know, you know you have a car in the garage, but you'd rather ride your bike to work every day. Be like, why don't you use your car? Ah, I just don't feel like turning that ignition on that car. That was too much work. That's the mentality. You end up doing things fast backwards. You know, you just do them wrong. It's just it doesn't make any sense. And look. It's a reflection of society. People avoid the basic tax. I already tasks. I already, I already touched on that a little bit, right? People are, don't want to shop. Amazon's great now because everybody gets everything delivered. Nobody goes to stores anymore. That's why malls are, are going under. Nobody wants to do anything. There's maid services. There's cleaning services. There's cooking services. There's flight services. There's driving services. Everything, every service you can imagine under the sun, they'll do for you, right? I mean, there's people in New York that have, uh, I've seen it only in New York, maybe it's all over the country, they call them adulting classes. Adulting classes. For grown people between the ages of 25 and 35, where they'll teach them basic life skills. Because nobody knows how to use a screwdriver to, to change their batteries. Or hang a, you know, hammer and a nail to hang a, a frame. And so there's these, and these are real, look it up. I'm not making this stuff up, it's called adulting, right? There's guys, in, uh, and it's also in New York, I mean, I don't know where these articles, I don't remember when I read these, but they're just coming to mind. Uh, there's people that you can cuddle with. It's a cuddle service. For people who don't have time for relationships, they get off of work and they pay somebody to cuddle with them for 20 minutes. And this guy or girl or whatever, they'll sit there and cuddle you for 20 minutes and you go home. <laughs> Look, if I want to get cuddled, I have a wife. And I'll put the kids to bed early because we discipline them, right? And then I get to cuddle with my wife and we, we can either eat dinner or hang out or watch, have a date night if we, if we bring over a baby, whatever, right? And that's the other one, talking about babysitters. I mean, my wife and I haven't gone on a date like a, what the world would consider a date in years, right? And the one time we were, uh, our sister-in-law came, she was going to watch the kids. We were finally going to go on a date, and then the water didn't work. We couldn't shower. We couldn't go. It was like one day. It was a random thing. But what I'm saying is, but most people will leave their kids with just anybody. And Pastor Cop just showed me a video of a little kid that's getting slapped by another a grown man because the grown man doesn't know how to take care of the kid. I would. That's why I don't leave my kids with anybody. Amen. Stop being lazy taking care of your kids. Amen. Stop being lazy. Hey, look, if you're going to fornicate and you get pregnant... Well then, tough. Raise that child. Now it's like, I'm too lazy to raise that child. Let's just kill it. Think about, think about the logic. You're so lazy and so lack of commitment, you'd rather kill the child. You know, I'll just give you these final points. You know, and God will punish the slothful. And slothful below leads to wickedness. That's the big point I want to make, is that it's a wicked thing to be slothful. It's not so much that you're lazy. Look, we all make mistakes. There's sometimes that we don't have follow through in our lives. Everybody's done it. But if it's a continual pattern in your life, all it's gonna do is lead to idleness, and that idleness will lead to wickedness. And it's no, and, and I mean, I'm gonna give you great examples. Look, the reason that we kill so many babies is because people are lazy. It's hard to take care of kids. You know, they wake you up at all hours, they don't have a pattern. They're not like dogs. You know, I hate when people say, oh, my dog's my kid. No. You know, I mean, they have a personality. You could have them sleeping great for a whole month. Seven o'clock, they wake up at eight o'clock, perfect. And then they, they just decide that they're not going to be sleeping anymore. 
and they're waking up at three o'clock in the morning ready to play. That's hard work. But the lazy person would rather just, you know, give them a toy, turn on the TV, and leave them alone. Yep. Right? They won't discipline them. When they get up in the morning, they go to work and they drop them off with a stranger. And then they come home and they want to go on a date night and they drop them off with another stranger. And then the kid says, Dad, I don't believe like you believe. And I don't think like you think. And you wonder what, what happened. Well, I've been sending you off to school for the last 18 years. Yep. And you're not going to church on a consistent basis. And we haven't been reading our Bible at home. What do you expect? You know, it's like this guy, I, I, I didn't know until we were so waiting, some guy actually told me, so I looked it up just to verify. An unemployed 30 year old sued his parents because his parents couldn't kick him out of the house in New York. Yeah. So he turned around and he sued his parents. We, we're, we're so backwards now that you're 30, you know, if you're 30 years old and you sue your parents because they're kicking you out of your house, we've got problems. <laughs> it's a serious day and age. You know, we make fun of it, but we're in a serious time in our lives when 30 year old men, and this is more like a boy, but he should be a man, is living at home. It's not so much that he's living at home. Everybody, I mean, when I was like 30, I lost my business, my entire business. My cars got repossessed. You know, I lost all the money. It was just a tough time in the business that I had. I moved in temporarily with my parents just to recover for six months. And then I left. You know, I got married. I was like, I'm done. It was a time, but he, this guy was like mooching off his parents. Yep. This is a 30 year old and he took him to court. Yeah. And the parents had to fight and prove that this guy was a like a leech of society. <laughs> you know, 20, this, I told these, and I did on purpose an old statistic and, I'm, and, I'll, and I'll wrap up with this. In 2014, they came out statistics for video games. 59% of Americans, 59% of Americans, they didn't say what age group, play video games. Video games, guys, this is horrible. The top two video games are about stealing and fornication and killing and war and bloodshed. Those are the top two. Ages, uh, ages 18 and under, 29% of that play video games. Here's the, the scary statistic. Ages 18 to 35, 32% of ages 18 to 35 play video games. 36 and above. 39% of men and women 36 and above play video games. That means that there's almost 40% of my generation that at some point in their day play a video game. You know what I'm saying? I played video games when I was a kid, but then I put away childish things. You know, when I became a man, I put away childish things. This is leading to wickedness. Look, it's a brainwashing. That's why people don't want to have kids. That's why divorce is at an all-time high. That's why people don't want to have uh, uh, marriages. That's why there's all kinds of cohabitation and fornication. And here's, it gets even worse. Those are the easy sins to pick at. That's why in church, nobody wants to commit to doing anything for the Lord. Because they're too busy playing video games on a Sunday. They're too busy watching the Super Bowl or, or, or Sunday night football or Sunday afternoon football or going to you know baseball games. And hey, I'm all for you know getting a time where you need to just regroup. You know, even Elijah was put to bed and was fed for three days, but you regroup. You don't entertain all the time. You don't spend all your time doing stupid things. You don't spend all your time just going out there and living in the world and not doing anything for God. We expect that from the world. But if we're out there for Christ, then get to work. You know? The industrial, and then I'll just close. This is, I, I'm actually, this is where I'm going to close. I, I hate, you know, I, I never liked it when pastors say, I'm going to close, and then they never close, and now I'm doing it. The reality is sometimes you get ahead of yourself. But the industrial revolution, if you studied it, was a, a revolution of slothfulness and, and, and idleness and wickedness. Because what it did was it forced people who were self-sustaining in all areas of life. They knew how to feed themselves. They knew how to make their own clothes. They knew how to barter with the people next door. They had communities, small communities. And in those communities, there was a, guess what there was? The local church. And then the Industrial Revolution came and said, look, we're going to give you jobs. And we're going to educate you. But you're only going to have to work from 8 to 5. Because at first, it was you know long hours. But then somebody got complaining and said, oh, no, you know labor laws. we got to protect ourselves. And, make sure nobody gets dies from overwork and all that stuff. You know, before, these same farmers who would wake up at the crack of dawn and go to bed when the sun set, now they're going into these jobs in these factories and they're like, look, if you work me too hard, I'm going to die and you're going to get sued. 
This is what it did, right? And it created a generation of lazy individuals. Because nobody knows how to fend for themselves. Nobody knows how to do anything. You know, I think back to this is how bad it's gotten. I was 14 years old. I remember it now. My parents were talking about growing up and we were doing things, we were reminiscent. And I got a job at a doctor's office and I remember I loved it. I was working so hard and I was doing grunt work. And it was one week and then they fired me. And the reason they fired me was because the labor department came in and they asked my age. And I've always looked young and I was too young to work in the labor force. They took away my ability to want to work. It wasn't even for the money, I just wanted to be busy. You know why? Because God ingrains that in our system, in our soul. You know, when, you, when you're not doing something, you're bored. And then it leads to suicide, and it leads to fornication, and it leads to all kinds of wickedness because you don't have you don't know what to do with your time. You're trying to fill it. Have you ever tried to, to be stupid after a day of soul winning? The only thing I want to do after soul winning in 100 degree weather is shower, eat dinner, and go to bed. Have you ever tried to do something stupid after taking care of your kids and your wife and a day's work? No, you're tired. That's the only time that you should sleep, right? After a long day's work. But anyways, I hope that it was helpful, you know, just kind of laid in my heart. For us as Christians, we need to really study the Word of God and look at His promises for us, both the negative and the positive. See, I could have preached this message on the positive side. And that's what most preachers will do. And then I give you self-help and I give you a real positive spin on God's riches for our life and everything. But the reality is, we've got to be careful not to be lazy. There's plenty of good stuff out there. We live in a great country. I mean, if you're not making money in this country, I'm not talking millions of dollars. If you can't support your family in the U.S. of A., even to this day with all the challenges, then you're, you're just lazy. I mean, and then we met a guy, he sold me a box of mangoes in the valley for $6. And then he went back and he had a bunch of them. And we did the math. If he did that just 10 times in one day, that's $60. Five days, six days a week, that's 360 bucks. You're already looking at 20 grand a year. And you know he's not selling 10. He's probably selling 20 or 30. That means he's probably making a good 30, 40 grand a year if he's just pounding the pavement. This is a country where making money is not that difficult if you put your effort into it. But we're so lazy that we'd rather send somebody to go get my groceries, pay money I don't have so that I could eat the food that I would have gotten myself anyways because I'm too lazy to get up to do it. So let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for uh, your word and all these verses. And, and I miss some. I didn't want to go into the, you know, your the slothfulness we talk about in Matthew and in Thessalonians and in Romans and in Hebrews and the book of Judges. I just want to focus on the specific things that you bring up. <coughs> Excuse me. And the way that it affects us. Lord, help us to go out there and work. And for us as Christians, help us to go out there and do your will, which is so many, Lord knocking on those doors, talking to those people. You know, there's a day coming where our work will stop. And those people who didn't hear the gospel and didn't accept you will be in hell for all eternity, Lord. There's a labor, but there's a spiritual labor that's more important than the one that puts money in our pockets. It's the one that puts people in heaven and gives us heavenly rewards, Lord. Help us to go out there and do your will and work hard for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.